As Guyana sits on the economic and political crossroads, we speak to the nation's opinion leaders and decision makers to get their views on the challenges the country faces and the path it must take to achieve national development. Welcome to Nation Watch. Now here is your host Mervyn Williams, former member of the Guyana Parliament. Hello and welcome to Nation Watch. It's Sunday, April 7, 2024, and we're going to have a conversation on another crisis in the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. You know, I want to first thank you all for joining us from wherever you are, and trust that as you usually do, you will stay with us for the duration of the program. Life in Guyana is worse under the people's program. Party. Rice is in trouble. Sugar is in trouble. The energy sector is in crisis. The cost of living is really, really, really bringing citizens of this country to their knees. Farmers are dumping hundreds of pounds of food. Baigan, as we call it okra, bora, all these things are being dumped. Why? Because they're being produced and people are not capable of buying them. They lack the resources to buy these items to put on the table for their, for their families. So the farmers are suffering even as the consuming public is suffering. We're moving from one crisis to the other. But today we're going to be, we're going to be discussing the crisis, the energy crisis in this country the Guyana Power and Light, or lack thereof. And um, we're going to explore some solutions. And I have a very special guest with me here to discuss this issue. But before I bring in my guest, I want to show you how the situation at GPL is described by the de facto the crisis at GPL. We go to a short video. The situation is bad. There, no, there is no sugar coating this. That's bad, Jack. You're describing the GPL crisis. And here's how Mr. Jack Dio and the People's Progressive Party manage the Guyana Power and Light Company. This is coming as, as we would say in local parlance from the horse's mouth. Here's how GPL is being managed. Only immediately and call what's going on again. So that's how GPL is being managed. And, you know, the People's Progressive Party often says that they're a caring government and, you know, they empathize with all that's happening, notwithstanding the fact that the teachers are being um, denied a living wage and their salaries are being deducted reportedly for the period of time that they were on strike. Nurses suffer the same indignity. 200 nurses have left from Region 10 alone. 30 doctors have left from Region 10 alone. And that's but a sample of what's happening across the country. But here's how the Caring People's Progressive Party responds to the energy crisis. While we suffer at home, from darkness, from extreme heat. Here's how they deal with it. It goes off four or five times at home for me too. I have a generator. Let's hear that once more. It goes off four or five times at home for me too. I have a generator. But then they lament. They failed because of incompetence. They failed because of management deficit. They fail because they don't have a plan. And here's how they apologize to the nation. We lost a major opportunity to change out all of these old units. Here's a gentleman talking about losing a golden opportunity after 23 years in government and having returned. And in another three or four months time, they would have been in government for, what, an additional four years. Let's hear that again. 
we lost a major opportunity to change out all of these old units. Now, the People's Progressive Party, specifically Mr. Jagdeo and Dr. Ashni Singh, have laid blame squarely at the feet of the AP and new AFC for the crisis. Dr. Singh in, I believe it's the Guyana Times, and Mr. Jagdeo at one of his famous rants, The coalition caused us to be... Now, here's a look at the PPP's proposed solution to the energy crisis in Guyana. Just take a look at this photograph taken from the Kaichou News in 2013. This image is the image of a dried-up Amaila Falls. Amaila is known for drying up from time to time. But it is the same water supply from the same falls that the PPP proposed as the solution for ending blackouts in this country. Without a plan for transmitting electricity from Amaila to anywhere, without a distribution system in mind, they just decided that Amaila would be the solution to this country's problems. But to do that, Amaila must have water all the time. And that image is one that tells us potentially what can become of Amaila. Permit me, ladies and gentlemen, to introduce to you, well, to present to you because he's well known in every household in this country, Mr. David Patterson, Member of Parliament and immediate past Minister of Public Infrastructure. Mr. Patterson, David, welcome to Nation Watch. Thank you, Marvin. Um, good afternoon to all your, your viewers and everyone out there. It's a pleasure to be here um, to spend the afternoon discussing what I know is a troubling situation for each and every one of us in this country. You have been you have been busy while Minister of Government, and you are becoming busy again because of the failure of the um, a number of areas for which you have had ministerial positions after you've demitted office. Um, the quality of infrastructure generally, um, but we we want to focus on the energy crisis for today. There's a lot more we can talk about, but let's focus on this energy crisis. We are where we are because of the incompetence of the People's Progressive Party. Now, there is there's a provision in the Electricity Sector Reform Act for the licensing of GPL, which mandatorily calls for a plan. When you demitted office, when the AP and UAFC demitted office, the Guyana Power and Light at the level of its board had received, considered, and approved such a plan. That's correct. With medium, with short term, medium term, term, and long term proposals. That's correct. In fact, I recall there being proposals that would have come into effect by 2026, 20, 27, which speaks of the extent of the planning that went into that. The People's Progressive Party came into government. The plan somehow got shredded. There have been. Um, no additions to the plan, which is mandatory required annually. And there's been nothing in that plan that has been implemented. Tell us, David, what's really happening at GPO? Well, uh, Marvin, I think you served it. Um, you, you did a quick synopsis, and, 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 and that's absolutely correct. Um, GPL has a, had, I can say like, definitively, what you call a five-year and a 10-year plan. Um, I know when we demitted office, there was the 2020 to 2019 to 2024 yeah. plan in place and being implemented. And obviously, the 2021 would have, um, to 2025 would have been in progress. I can't recall if it was actually executed, but I would have seen a draft. Um, these plans obviously take into account the 
current situation in the country, um, our at at time you know, we, we now became a oil producer that started producing oil in 2019 December. Um, but at the time we made a projection, we made projections of where we see the based on everything where we see the country would have been for the next couple of years. Um, we started and we acted on that and. Uh, we had a whole diversification plan. We had the, the technical persons in place, highly qualified technical persons in place. Um, and obviously, the, when the government changed in 2020, um, they abandoned everything. Thing. But the, the most important issue that I think that we should have a discussion on with this government, they assumed office in 2020. When did they discover that there was a problem? Because obviously they've been in, in office, as you said, just short of four months, a couple of months short of four months. And then having discovered that there is a problem, what did they do? I think these are the most important questions that you have. Because there's a plan, they abandon it, they put no um, additional plan in place yet. So obviously um, the company would have been just freewheeling without a, a clear direction. At some stage, they would have realized that, the, that doing nothing, the liturgy in which they were uh, operating on would, is a problem. When was that? And having recognized it is that they have an impending problem, what would they have done? So I think those are the questions that, 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 that needs to be answered. And then when, when those questions are answered, what will they be doing? I mean, we have several proposals um, and, 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 and we would like to urge them to look back at what we, we were doing and uh, call it quite feasible and financially viable, more than financially viable, because remember that we would have done all these um, projects, all these plans without a cent of oil money. Now we, mm -hmm. our budget, our largest budget was 300, 380 something billion. We had the 1.4 or 1.14 trillion. trillion dollars which is four times the amount of money that we would have had. So obviously you would have thought that you know, maybe with, with all that money available to them, um, money would not be the issue. It's obviously um, a fool and his money are off party necessarily. And we're seeing that now at the moment. David, the short term plan that the coalition left for GPL spoke of the implementation of a 46.5 megawatt um, additional generation by 2020, which in fact, I believe you, have you had accomplished before the meeting office. Correct. And a 4 of 55.2 megawatts by 2021. Correct. The People's Progressive Party decided to procure generators capable of producing only 30 Megawatts. Well, 28, um, the, 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 the claim is 28 megawatts. We, we could round up and be yeah, generous. Just 30, right. So let's keep it a round number then. Which is way below what is immediately required. And four years late. And four years And four late. years late. Because you, the, the, 50, the 50 megawatts, 55 megawatts we were talking about should have been here in By 2021. 2021. So therefore, you mean, so you wouldn't have had, you, you had a cushion. So they bought less and took a longer time uh, to even procure that, uh, to implement it. And, and up to now, the 30 is not 30 because it's not functioning. And now we have a bigger crisis where three crankshafts or the crankshafts of three generating sets are reportedly damaged. And so three of these sets are out and the newly acquired second-hand ones have not yet been installed, reportedly because they are not in the condition to be installed. They're not operable at this time. <laughs> What's happening as far as your information goes inside GPL, and why particularly do you believe this, particularly the short-term aspect of this plan, which is immediately necessary, has not been activated? Well, um, from, from from inside GPL, um, I must, and, and they've asked me to, to make a clear distinction between the staff and the management. The staff said that they're working seriously around the clock, um, of course, with little compensation at this government's one, as opposed to the management who were all brought in and installed by the PPP. Um, most of them have zero idea what a kilowatt is. 
zero idea how electricity is generated, produced, or distributed. Um, they just got the job because of, um, obviously, their party affiliations. So I want to make a distinction. So anything I say after now, folks, I want this distinction between the, the staff and the management. What has happened? Obviously, they stopped everything because on August, on August 2nd, 2020, we've already, we would have already procured the 46.6 megawatts in which I was explaining to you there. And we already went out for a bid for the additional 55 uh, megawatts. Folks, you got to understand that, that, that um, generators are not um, things you buy off the shelf. You have to go to a manufacturer and they have to manufacture it to you from scratch. Yeah, so so um, so we went out. The bids were supposed to be returned for the 55. They were supposed to return on the 1st of September 2020, but obviously the government changed uh, a month before. And, 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 and COVID as well. And, but, but, yeah, know. well, COVID, but, but these, these were online um, mm. bids, so so we could have received them. And, and obviously it takes a year, 18 months, mm. to, between the bid and the final product being installed. Um, they scrapped that process. Um, up, they scrapped every single thing, every single plan, almost every single plan that the, the coalition so, had so, in place. So one second. So 55.2 megawatts should have been here in 2021, having been prior arranged and, and contract sealed. Correct. Well, the, the contract was not sealed. I mean, supposed to be the negotiations yes, were right. settled. So, so the bids were there, mm -hmm. bids were, and then they scrapped the process. So, um, having scrapped the process, you would have thought, well, they would have have they would have done an alternative. They would have some other um, solution, but they did not. They were very enamored with the new sets that we bought, which is early 2020, late 2019, early 2020. I mean, and, and those new sets were good enough for what we, the power demands that we needed in 2020 and uh, early 2021. So having seen these new sets there, um, they said, okay, let's not do anything. Let's just fed our nests. Let's do the old propaganda. And then what happened? They did nothing. They fell into a lull. They had no plans. They did nothing from in 2021, 2022, mid-2023, the, everything started catching up in them. You know I mean, they, they blame climate change last year, August, saying to other people buying um, air conditioning and turning it on. That's why they have the load, um, a shortage. Um, that's August, uh, um, September, August um, of 2023. Now, that was when, in my opinion, that they figured out that they're in deep doo doo without a paddle. So that is when they scrambled around and bought these um, second or third hand sets somewhere from somewhere in Honduras. That was in August 2021, having done nothing. Obviously, um, the sets that they bought are being laying around in some yard in Honduras. Uh, we don't know the condition. They weren't working, right? Um, they weren't new. We don't know when last they were fired up and worked and those things like that. They didn't test them in Honduras. Obviously, to test them, they're in containers. You know what I mean? They were packed away for whatever reason. Um, and they brought them to Guyana and they promised us in November last year that they, they would be installed. Then they said it would be installed for Christmas. Then just after New Year, the latest assessment would be installed at the end of March. And up to now, they haven't been installed because obviously um, they underestimated. This, the, the other problem that they have with the generators is that these, these generators are not meant for base load. Base load is what it, 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 um, um, is, is what is the base of our power generating system. Um, these generators are more uh, suitable as backup mm -hmm. powers. You know what I mean? Um, so they've now taken backup power and tried to to base load that. On top of that, they stopped doing maintenance. All of these things mean when it pre twenty fifteen, we are in the exact same position when we took over. Several sets were done. They have they, they did not do any maintenance to the to, to them on time. They ran them in a generator runs on it's like a car. Um, everybody knows how if you have a car, it's they say services every three months or every or uh, every three thousand miles kilometers, whichever comes first. Mm. Same thing with generator. We, it's supposed to be serviced, I think, every hundred thousand running hours. Um hundred thousand running hours came and passed. And they, these um, these guys in charge just were interested in PR and going to cocktails and spending money and traveling around the world. So eventually, they 
it all caught them caught up with them i mean if you have a car and you run it for a year without changing the oil and the filters and things like that it will break down so that is what has happened to them in the last month and a half kingston one sets have broken crankshafts the alternators which are power them they broke down so we have lost the whole grid has lost about 30 megawatts of 30 to 40 megawatts and then the new sets that we bought in garden eden that supposed to be the super function when are not functioning well so there's a shortage and they have no clue the, 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 the containerized ones that they bought aren't working and even if they all of them are working you still be short because that only produces I say 30 you give them very generously mm -hmm. but we short 40 and every day it's increasing you know what I mean so we we will be um, in a period of load shedding um you they can call it what they want energy conservation whatever they want to call it um generally that's what's going to be happening from now at least for the rest of 2024. so david the Ghana power and light ought to have been benefiting and by extension the country's consumers from 101 megawatts of new investment by 2021. correct instead what we have um, are the sets that produce for the 6.5, which the we, APN you left. Right. So we have place. a deficit. <sighs> we started off 2021 at the end of 2021 with a deficit, obviously. Um, you know what I mean? And, and, and they're the ones that keep boasting that we're the fastest growing economy in the world and everybody wants to come. And that's right. Everyone wants to come together to get a piece of the pie. But obviously, every new, and then they, they, they also go around opening malls and say to hospitals, um, hotels, I mean, their friends and family opening businesses. So the demand grows. So, demand grows. so they, they, they like the PR side of the work, of the job, whereby they go and they cut a ribbon and say, you know, Minali and Jagdio and, and all of them, and the PM cut a ribbon and says, oh, this is, a, this is a testimony of how great your government is. We just cut the ribbon for another mall. We just cut the ribbon, we just turn the sod for another hospital etc so that's a lovely pr and they put a big big bowl. but behind that any primary school student would know that if you bring more things into um, buildings house, into right. a house more appliances into a house you could um, you mean you you build your house to take eight fans but you put a start to you 16 you know that something will go wrong obviously um primary school logic miss these guys but there was a lot of foresight in the planning of the AP and UFC. For example, the 46.5 megawatt gen sets that came in are adaptable to using natural right. gas. So, and and there, there's an issue here with the diversion of the natural gas pipeline to a place far removed from, from Garden of Eden, the so, main generating right. area. Yeah. Walk us, walk us so, through the foresight. So, and the, so the we, 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 we had proposed a, a, a gas shore, a gas project bringing on gas into shore. That the idea came from us, um, um, the, the Ministry of Public Infrastructure and Department of Energy, and we had a location which was all the way up in um, closer Region Five border, Region Five, Region Four, Region Five on the East Coast, and we said, fair enough. Uh, we don't know how long this gas is going to take, but the sets that we're going to buy, like particularly like the four six point six sets. Um, are we call modular and they, they're not you know I mean they can be uplifted and and, 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 and relocated plus they were um, what we would say um, dual fuel so the, so that when gas comes to shore um, you can just switch them over from the what they're running on now so our idea is all investment that we are doing now mm -hmm. right would not go down the drain as opposed to the the, the idea with the, with the PP has with the whales so totally wrong location four times the price of, of the project we were uh, proposing uh, but when and they're obviously trying to bring in new brand new sets so when those new sets do come on on stream all the sets that we're buying now or, or we bought um from during our time and even the even uh, the ones that they bought in um for freedom who um, will have to be shut down because they're they're useless they, they're just excess so they, they they decided that here now we'll have this ways gas to shore project i mean a pie in the sky is another skeleton in the makings and um just on the exact same um 
PR like Skeldon. Remember when when Jagdo announced that he's gonna make Skeldon Skeldon gonna revitalize the sugar industry, and this one project will be the savior of the whole sugar industry. And they put all their money into it, and it failed, and it pulled the entire sugar industry down. This is where the Wales Got to Show project is going. It, it will fail because it, it wasn't thought about. I mean, it, they they've been doing it for four years, and they haven't even. Um, driven a pile as yet. They haven't done anything as yet. Um, so, you know, I mean, obviously, when they got onto the site, you know, I mean, everything looks lovely and green from above. But when you actually, when they got onto the site, they realized there was swamp, couldn't take the weight, the location was wrong. So um, they haven't started anything on that project. Um, so, so we're just forewarning, but they, but there are, there are solutions to these things, um, Merv. And if they, particularly one listen, right? We would offer some solutions to them. Um, but the solutions were there. The, yes, the solutions are, right. are on paper. Yeah. They're sitting on a desk somewhere. Yeah. Can they just pick it up and read it? Too much writing. They like they like documented pictures. You know what I mean, so they, 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 our, our, our um, expansion plan is well detailed. You know what I mean? It's a, in a big volume, page by page. Um, these guys they have very short attention spans. They can't read, you know what I mean? Um, you, you, it, 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 it's so, they don't like to read the details and even if they read it, don't understand it. So um, so, so we are, are willing to, as a, as, a, as a opposition, to read and interpret it to them and, assist, uh, and help them. First thing that they have to do, get a management team in place that understands that we have a problem. Get a management team in place, full stuff. Right, yes. No, well, <laughs> no, 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 because no, we don't want them changing. No, there's no uh, management there's team. There's no management there's team. There's a group of people, people right? Who are so, incompetent. Yeah, but, but if they bring in another one just because they take out, then they bring in another square peg and try and put them there. So there must be a caveat. The people that they're bringing in are people that we know putting, we have people we can recommend as well, you know, um, to come in there and um, they must understand our challenges and our problems. They, I see that they've signed up some big contract with some company from Dominican DR, you know what I mean, they, 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 to, um, to come and help us. I can uh, I, I can predict that would be another failure, you know what I mean? The, the, the power situation in DR um, and Guyana is totally different. When, they, when those technicians from DR come and they see that bird nest of wires running down the embankment, you know what I mean? It's, it's like, uh, they, they, they be totally flabbergasted they'd be, they be hard pressed to figure out what what really is going on i mean um they they you know so uh bringing in people from from afar that that, that, that would have done structured work and those things like that it, 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 um that I, I don't think that that would be our immediate solution we have, we have the brain yeah, mm -hmm. shop. We, we have the we had the brains there was a company that took over from warsilla which was mass uh, manned by 100% Guyanese, 100%, 140 of them. I mean, eight or five of them were highly trained international persons um, that were with us. As soon as the PPP came in, they fired the top management. Guys with, I'm talking 20, 30 years experience in, in power management uh, because they said they were super salaried. I mean, you're bringing back people from that are internationally recognized and wanted and nothing. Fired them. Went in the board and looked at it. Said, oh, gosh, these guys are earning too much. You know, so they, they, just like how they do the teachers. And so they, mm. they, they, they don't equate the value, um, your skills and responsibilities, mm. the your remuneration. Fired them. All the guys were fired. Every one of them just left the country and are employed in international power. And earning more. And, and earning more, mm. right? But that, that's the type of persons that we have. I mean, unless you are a friend and family from for them, I mean, uh, earning a decent living is considered super salary. Um, while the corruption that is going on here, you know, I mean, they, they have no problem with that. They have a problem with somebody who they perceive to be brought in by the coalition, irrespective of how well qualified he or she is, uh, should not be earning more than it. Uh, minimum wage, and if you are minimum over the minimum wage, you send them away. We're discussing this is Nation Watch, and we're discussing GPL. We're looking at solutions, 
and Nation Watch is engaging David Patterson, Member of Parliament and immediate past Minister of Public Infrastructure. David, the plan left by the coalition envisaged and practically worked out administrative, finance, and operations wise. Yeah. The doubling through new investment of our power capabilities by 2023. Yeah. We envisage by 2021, 101 megawatts. Correct. And by 2023, 221.7 additional. additional. Correct. What is our capacity now? What is the level of our demand in your estimation? And how would life have been better off had we followed this plan to arrive at new investment, giving us an additional 221.7 So, So when, we, when, when, when the PPP uh, came to office in August 2022, the country, our, our, um, peak, our peak generating power was 180 megawatts. Mm -hmm. At the end of 2023, the country's peak generating power was 185 five megawatts in four years. I mean, that's like, and a megawatt, folks, is like one of those um, um, green gen sets you see powering a, a building, that, that, that is one. Mm -hmm. So they, up, they did absolutely nothing in the five years. They, they, even the sets that we put in, they did not maintain so that they are no longer functioning. So therefore, we are right now only have about 150, barely mid-150. At uh, maximum. At maximum reliable um, power now. Short, we short 30 to 40. Demand is increasing every single day. Um, no, no provision no, for downtime. No, no provision for maintenance. For downtime. So, so uh, we actually regressed as a country instead of progressing. The only thing that progressed, like um, you can say, is, is, is the money from the oil. But we've regressed into it. I mean, um, they, they and 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 if you look at it, take a you know, I mean a step back and you look at it. Not only power sector, like the whole country. What have they really done with the money that they would have received in twenty from twenty twenty from the oil production we left there to now? Water. I mean, people in on the east east bank can tell you as I speak now they have no water. Several areas are out of water. Of course, GPL, as we're talking about, is there. I mean, powering the pumps to GWI. Powering the pumps to GWI. Mm -hmm. The wells are not there. I mean, because that they, they haven't maintained them. I mean, the water is coming out because if you maintain them, the water comes out, it won't be so brown. It's almost like we're pulling, drawing mud. You have to change the filters. You have to do clearing and those things like that. Um, so that's it. Healthcare is, is, is on a decline. Education is on a decline. You know what I mean? Every single sector that you would have expected uh, to be improved, which are constitutional, basic human rights sectors, are on the decline. So persons have to sit down and in their own time reflect what have the PPP done with this tremendous amount of money that they would have received from um, 2020 to 2024. But, but David, if you pause there for a second, this plan that the coalition put in place and started to activate, well, actually activated, Activate, yes. mm -hmm. um, envisaged a massive expansion in the energy sector, but drew on its financial side resources that are purely non-oil. Correct. So that if in fact you were in government now and you had a benefit of the revenues from oil, I mean, you could have accelerated the implementation of that plan. But here we are at 2024, and your plan as a government envisaged 221.7 yeah. megawatts yeah. of 225, new, 225 yeah. uh, um, today. From, from, from new investment that yeah. should have been in place by last year. Yes. Right, so so that's what I'm saying. So 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 they they they, they haven't done anything. They will not do anything. Um, they it takes about a year to get a, as I was saying to, to 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 get a proper generating set. You know what I mean? Um, I I would probably 
say to them now to go and, and try and procure proper generating sets at the moment instead of secondhand ones. Dual fuel, so therefore, um, when they come, we can power them by uh, by natural gas. Um, I, I would dissuade them. You'll be hearing rumors that they're going to buy some third hand sets from, from Brazil. And I, I even heard a rumor oh, just yesterday evening that they're considering bringing in a barge, a, a power barge to, um, to, 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 to hook up to the grid. I mean, right now we are what we, what, what you call, um, um, so, so, so there are men like, um, the famous Sue, Jagdio Sue, there are men like those middlemen coming in scurrying around the globe for second hand third hand things um generating sets and sending in um proposals to them they are so desperate they'll be accepting one of these second third hand um, generating sets it's not long term not sustainable it's quite expensive immediately available but no good no good just like the ones in Horn George. they were made, they were sitting in a yard in a scrap yard in a storage yard i mean so they were immediately available you know what i mean so um that, that that that's what they can do it's almost like when they went to buy the if you could remember the water cannon oh yes they bought the water <laughs> cannon immediately available and then roy bought it set out it immediately it never worked so that's exactly what is going to happen to us go to the manufacturer this is exactly what we did. we went to war for the four to six and we said and we said to them these are the units we want how can we get the units in in six months time in five months time they said listen to me um this is it we had we had an order because we had an order um you are in a queue but however we can bring you up in in the queue if you pay a premium of five percent and we did the premium five percent to ensure that's how we were able to beat covid you have to go to these manufacturers caterpillar and those things like that you mean they're, they're, they're persons canceling orders they're persons uh, they're making new gen sets uh, at the moment so you go to them buy it Make sure it's dual fuel. Make sure that they can be run off of natural gas and put it in a location whereby uh, and, and run it and start start running it. Going around doing these um, small stop gap issues, waiting on this um, silver bullet you call the gas to show project in Wales will not help us. Especially in the absence of a distribution system. In distribution regard. system. I mean, we 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 spoke about. Another issue, I mean, I, I don't want to uh, bring up too much. I, I want to look forward, but 2018, we applied and we were, and it was just about for 110 million US dollars to build a whole new grid, whole new meaning. Of course, people talk about, uh, I talked about the bird nest and so forth. By um, then, this is, that's late 2018. By 2019, it was being, it was approved in the process of being implemented and those things like that. Uh, COVID came, so that delayed the, the start of it. PP came back and shut it down. So by, if they had even just, just and the only reason they shut it down, it wasn't because it was needed. It was because it was an idea brought to by the coalition. And, 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 and they have this fear and paranoia. But David, that if still... you That if you continue a idea by the coalition, um, that people will say, oh, these these... That, that government was far had be, far better ideas than you but but so they kill it but it's ridiculous because they're still running with burnham's on and garden of eden mm -hmm. set up so, since the early 1970s they they they, they, they still run with mma and those things like that but but they they wanted to to, to to portray this this impression that the coalition had no idea the coalitions could not do anything Good and those things like that I mean it, it, it's one of their mantras that they carry to their, their part so the mere fact that they, you had a really you could have been ahead of this by now we could have sorted out our grid and those things like that in two years time 2020 by 2022 we'll be better uh, not perfect but on the way um, a good way along the way then and that somebody will get up like i am now to say that oh well, that, 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 that that's the coalition they were so they're mortally afraid of that so they cancelled that entire loan that whole process it took 18 months and, and to do the design and, and, and just wait to be implemented okay if you're going to do that you have to replace it with something and they did absolutely nothing they got rid of it and then they have the the, the, the talk in the bobbing heads in parliament who say oh yeah no nothing and then they talk and it's really uh they have to bring that back let's 
continue to look forward in this conversation here, David, with time running very swiftly away from us. Ladies and gentlemen, the AP and UAFC had a plan. The plan still exists. The People's Progressive Party has abandoned the plan for the development and expansion and have not put anything and have not replaced it with an alternative. alternative. This plan envisaged realistically too, may I add, that from non-oil resources, non-oil revenues, new investment in the Ghana Power and Light by 2026 would have resulted in 424 megawatts energy being produced, power being produced. Two and a half times what we have now. What possibility? Anywhere close to this well, by 2026? I, I I don't think so. It's not, it's not remote possibility, but, but, but more than I mean, <laughs> um, 2026 seems a long way off for the citizens who have no power now. Right? So that is our, our, my, my big, big, big issue. What is going to happen for the rest of 2024? Right, you know, I mean, it, 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 they know they can't get to 2026, but uh, to get 26, they have to pass through 2024, they have to pass yeah. through April, May, June, you know, what I mean, and then then you get into the really hot months of December and uh, August. Remember, though, last year, August, we had a major issue because of the shortfall. Now we, we start in support, support the cooler month, get that amount of power by 2026. However, Right? What are they going to do to get us through 2024? 2025, let us start with the very, very immediate um, issues that, that, that we have now. Blaming the coalition um, will not power generation. I mean, hot air, I mean, although you, if you harness it right, you can you can make it into power, but that would not um, power <laughs> yeah, you harness it correctly. And they're full of it, but, but they don't know to harness it. That will not be a lot of propane. Propane, a lot of propane. <laughs> now, yeah, they produce a lot of that. Right, so that wouldn't get us through. Uh, they have not even, I mean, I could recall, I can recall in, in 2016 when we came in, we were the exact same situation. All the sets were done, we were having dieting. I instructed the board, I said oh, that you have to go and face the press. Two, two chairmen of, of GPL during my trade was Robert Badal for the first half and Raul Lewis. Lucas. Lucas, mm -hmm. sorry, for, this, for the second half of the 2020. I said, you have to go and face the people. You have to convince them that you have a plan because, I mean, obviously, I'm the minister. We've given you all the resources you want. We brought in persons. We brought a new CEO from Jamaica. I'm um, a fellow named Albert Gordon. We went to inter advertise internationally in, in, in the journals you hear about, in the Financial Times, the Business Insider, um, you know, I mean, on, on, on the internet links in. We had, and then we, we hired a company, PricewaterhouseCoopers International. They they did the screening. They did the receive the application and they recognized. So um, this wasn't David Patterson. No, no nor was the board. No, nor we didn't go to them, bring nobody's brother like they've done, um, brought Nandala's brother back from wherever he is in Canada and installed him as a CEO. So PricewaterhouseCooper um, recommended Mr. Albert Gordon. When, when, and they sent the recommendations to us. So when the board interviewed, interviewed because the board did, not the minister, when the board interviewed Mr. Gordon, first thing they were impressed with is that on Mr. Gordon's CV, he had, he, Jamaica about 10 or 15 years ago, were experiencing the exact same thing that we were in 2015, 2016. That they had a, a dysfunctional grid, short of generation and those things like that. And Mr. Gordon was part of the team, management team, the head of the deputy, I think, that transitioned Jamaica and they're and, and, and they're a tourist country, you know what I mean? So they for the stable electricity impacted heavily on um, their economy at that time because of course you can't bring tourists and have blockouts all the time. And he was part of the team that stabilized and rationalized and modernized the 
Jamaica electricity. I mean, said, well, fair enough, you did it in Jamaica, man. They I mean obviously, and they and they produce. We were just like 150 at the time. Jamaica's were producing almost 900 uh, or, or old gigawatt of um, electricity. So they were like four or five times. Said if he was able to do that at a larger scale in Jamaica, let him come to Canada. He came hard, came, started to work, and everybody knows. I don't have to tell you how, mm -hmm. how much better the system was. As soon as the PPP came in, they fired him. A man hired on an internationally recruited um, thing. Nothing to do with me. I, I, I never met Mr. Gordon until the day um, he was introduced to me at the board. Never met him, never saw him, but I just saw the reports uh, from PricewaterhouseCoopers Advisory Service, and it was very impressive. They didn't even take the time to sit down and say, well, Mr. Gordon, so they, they said, no, no, you came in with the coalition, doesn't matter how qualified you are, out. And they, then they brought back in Mr. Dindayal, who they had previously fired. Yeah. And so so we have to change the management team. I mean, the the, the, the men, I mean, the, the, the deputy um, CEO um, for, for, for GPR, I think his name was Marshall, they fired him as well, got rid of him. Um, so all the guys with technical experience, they got rid of. So we have to go go back and uh, approach. And and but the guys are out there. We got to approach, uh, 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 try and um, speak to their patriotism and ask them once again to make the sacrifice to remigrate because they know the system. They have great men experiences. They're Guyanese. Try and get them back immediately. They they would be the easiest route to get these guys that left so bitterly. To come back immediately and help their help these these guys because these guys are obviously the management team are obviously out to see the moment david the people people's progressive party appears of, to have a three-point approach to the energy crisis in ghana one a mile of falls which is a dead issue oh yeah two removing large consumers manufacturers from the grid at a certain peak time and three, cussing out the coalition. Right. What would you advise the People's Progressive Party as an alternative, um, much needed, better approach right. to solving the problem? So electricity, like water, like um, human rights is a fundamental constitutional right, constitutional right, you know what I mean? So uh, cussing the coalition uh, who are part of the government, the opposition and the, and the government uh, part are part of the governance structure mm -hmm. cushion us out um and forgetting that you were there for 23 years before um 2015 and you were there four years after um 2020 so therefore obviously you um you you have to take responsibility for the, your lack of work in the 23 years as well as responsibility for your lack of work in the four years and don't just concentrate on the coalition years which were better than your um it, it, you have to now obviously go back to basics. We have a plan, we had a plan, we may need additional power, um, go and get it and go and buy it correctly. You know, um, let me, and when I say correctly, I, I want to give your, your viewers an example of what used to happen and what can happen. Um, with GPL. When we came in, when, when, I, when we took over in 2015, it was a major procurement scandal in the country. Mm -hmm. They claimed that they would go for public procurement. They would go through advertise publicly. Um, so when they, when we got in, you heard they had enough spares, they had enough this, they had enough that. I mean, so they were well stuck. But when we went down to the on for work, as you call, you went to charity in those places and you met the workers. The guys, I can remember particularly going to Anvawak and, and meeting the linesmen, the emergency crew persons from Anvawak. And the first thing it is, one of the elder senior men came up and he said, Minister, and he took up the safety boots. The safety boots were strapped with duct tape because it collapsed. And the company has a policy that gives you two safety boots per year, half year, right? Six months, every six months giving you. On GPL books, they bought safety boots. What? No, yeah, yeah. But they went and they bought it from one of their friends. I mean, I don't want to call the person. One of their friends, and he went now and he went, and I don't know what that I mean. Even the Chinese produce better than that. So he went and 
charged us the full price and they bought a fort quality looks good safety boots broke broke, broke up in an hour um in, within a month so we're sending our workers to go and deal with high voltage and and they have to strap up their boots with um with duct tape to keep it functional that's exactly what what's gone started to happen again you know what i mean you say it how you're going out just like these generators and says you say you're going to go out to get a tender but you award it to your friends and family for extravagant money um, but the quality of what you get it, it, it is questionable so we're asking them so so what our board did when we heard it is through the safety boots they went to the manufacturers of the best safety boots i can't remember who the company name in the world for electrical the safety boots for construction but for electrical work they went to the best and they said listen to me we will buy directly from you we don't want any middleman here and something like that we have a contract direct with you mm -hmm. and they bought and that was what was going on so we cut out all these middlemen that come with these uh, um inferior products and you did the same with the gensets we did the same with the gensets we started because we recognized that that's where the flaw there's a big flaw in the meters there's a big flaw in line hardware and and, and it was an eye-opener Everyone can remember. I'm sure everybody, um, they, they, they call separators, um, mm. uh, isolators. Nice. When you look on the, the in the old days, when, when we used to look at, they used to be ceramic, those brown yes. things. And yes. those, and they, they're now, they, the GPL under the PP started bringing some plastic ones. Well, now they're using a piece of wire. That's why right. they use yes, my yes. hooks, a little piece, piece of wire, wire. hook. So, right, mm. it used to be, so we had a ceramic one. Yeah. Then they started bringing plastic, cheaper, that started burning out. Mm. And obviously, what it causes the wire to overheat, to overheat the wires to touch and those things like that. We went, we said no, back to basics. Went back to the company, I think it's ABB, I think it was uh, with manufacturer, I can't remember where, where it was. We buying these things from you. We're not going to get these El Chipo, um, El Frenzo um, um, things. We we buying. So so, so the, the those little things started cutting out the minor issues you had major issues but the minor irritants in the system you, you, you got rid of them by putting quality products in uh, mm -hmm. from the manufacturers to the highest specification so you didn't have to worry about the irritants they've gone back to that again they've gone back you know I mean to bring in middlemen submitting and, and they're claiming it's, they've done it through public tender maybe but but if you don't you can go to public tender and you can go and get a, a a Chinese version of a generator. Cheap, looks good, brightly painted, but it doesn't function. In three minutes, David, what can the coalition or what does the coalition commit to the energy consuming population when it returns to government after the next election? Exactly what we uh, we started out to do. You know what I mean? Make, give you reliable, affordable electricity reduce in blockouts you know what i mean reduce loss i mean right now gpn loses 30 percent of their power generation through theft through commercial and you, when i say commercial you know who are the, the, the big commercial users and who they're lying to and that they steal the power and those uh, off the grid too and those off the grid so we, we we had a program of bringing people uh onto the grid i mean all those persons that couldn't qualify in those things and we will incrementally ensure that you get reliable things. We, we, we will not uh, put all our money into pie in the sky, um, dreams like whales, gas, assure. You know what I mean? Um, the whales project, if, 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 you, if you have a single source of power generation that they want to propose, what happens if that goes down? Mm -hmm. What happens if you have a freak storm and a lightning strikes the distribution? Or what happens if a, if 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 an anchor pulls up a, a pipeline? A pipeline. I mean, you, the whole country is now back to where it is. We 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 had a, had an energy diversification program. Remember, you, you have some in over in Region Three. You have generations just like any other country. There no no country puts everything in in, in one area. Mm -hmm. uh, God forbid. I mean, we have Maduro on our on, on our um, backs. All he has to do, then you have to bomb. All he has to do is go to the wire snipper and snip some wires, and the whole country's in blockout. I mean, because there, there's no redundancy in the system, there's no protection. So we would diversify. I mean, region three have, has some, region four will have some major generators. Five, six, two, ten have their own major, and they'll all be linked. But should one fail, the country 
should not be able to uh, should not suffer an alternative energy alternative energy so therefore one fails the one in region two fails i mean we try to get it back up as far as possible the rest of the country goes in the project that they're doing here so now is just like one all our eggs in one basket um so we we, we would commit to i mean to reliable stable um an affordable generating system uh, for the entire country, not just um, for friends and families. That's all the time we have for Nation Watch today, April 7th, 2024. I'd like to thank you, Mr. David Patterson, for Being taking time out and sharing with us solutions to the energy crisis, GPL solutions. Um, we look forward to having you join us again sometime to I, I, would love some, to. I, some I, I would, I would love to. I mean, uh, to, to be honest, I was just making a note. I probably would like to come here like a month's time. Yeah. So, so update the entire nation. Um, because uh, as I said, they, they, they're thinking of doing some shady deals. And, and you know, when there's an emergency, they will like, and come to parliament very soon for supplementary funding. And they say it's emergency funding and they're going to, through that mechanism, they're going to, um, raid and fleece our coffers so david patterson will be with us again in another four weeks god willing i'd like to thank our viewing and listening audience for joining us on nation watch today and for staying the duration of the program with us i hope that we have communicated with you the kind of information that you require for making your decisions whenever the next regional and general elections come around until next sunday God bless. God bless. Thank you.